During his lifetime, George Armstrong Custer aroused strong passions. People either loved him or hated him. It was during the campaign of 1868 that George Armstrong Custer, the Civil War hero, distinguished himself as an Indian fighter at the Battle of the Washita in Oklahoma. In the dust, confusion, and mystery of the Little Bighorn, there are echoes of the Battle of the Washita. In each fight, Custer followed a trail and found a village whose strength he did not pause to determine before attacking. Before each battle, scouts warned him of peril. In each battle, he divided his force and sent the fractions beyond his control. At the Washita, Custer's luck was at its zenith. Indian women and children captives shielded the 7th Cavalry from a counterattack by the large number of warriors from other nearby villages. At the Little Bighorn, the command was divided as before, but no Indian hostages were taken. Also essential to understanding the later events at the Little Bighorn is understanding the controversy surrounding the fate of Major Joel Elliott at the Battle of the Washita. After securing the village, Custer sent men out to look for dead and wounded troopers. Major Elliott and 19 men under his command were simply missing. At last, one of the scouts reported that soon after the attack on the village began, he had seen a few mounted warriors escaping from the village. Major Elliott and a small party of troopers were in close pursuit. Search parties were sent in the direction indicated by the scout, but after a brief search, further efforts to locate Major Elliott and his men were abandoned. Custer commenced a speedy withdrawal. Many of Custer's officers and men felt that Custer had not done enough, reporting Elliot and his men dead when in fact they were still only verifiably missing. By the summer of 1876, the 7th Cavalry's officers were split into pro and anti-Custer factions. The opposition centered on Major Marcus Reno and Captain Frederick Benteen, who was a close friend of the late Major Joel Elliott. Others outside the regiment also had an unflattering opinion of Custer. In 1874, General David Stanley, under whom Custer served during the Yellowstone expedition, wrote, I have seen enough of Custer to convince me that he is a cold-blooded, untruthful, and unprincipled man. He is universally despised by all the officers of his regiment, excepting his relatives and one or two sycophants. Custer's detractors called him a pet soldier, who, because of political influence and patronage, had risen not only above his own merit, but above men of equal merit. The hard feelings were further intensified by Custer's having managed to secure the assignment of his younger brother, Tom Custer, and his brother-in-law, James Calhoun, to his regiment. Custer's defenders at the time answered that what jealous rivals called luck was simply the result of downright hard work unlimited energy, and dauntless courage. Custer, who courted press attention, was regarded as a national hero by the general public. At the Battle of the Little Bighorn, Custer split his command, just as he had done at the Battle of the Washita. Troops under Major Marcus Reno and Captain Frederick Benteen survived the battle. Those under Custer's personal command were wiped out. Testimony given by the surviving officers of the 7th Cavalry at the Court of Inquiry after the Battle of the Little Bighorn indicates that they never believed Custer to be in mortal danger, that, in fact, they believed 
that he had abandoned them to their fate. Lieutenant Wallace testified, The command thought Custer had sent us in and then gone off and left us to look out for ourselves, that he made an attack and probably been defeated and had gone down the river to meet General Terry. Lieutenant Godfrey stated, There was an impression among the men that Custer had been repulsed and had abandoned them. Captain Benteen testified, It was the belief of the officers on the hill during the night of the 25th that General Custer had gone off to join General Terry and that we were abandoned to our fate. The ghost of Major Joel Elliott cast a long shadow, one which may have cost Custer his life.